So every now and then, a pilot will have a flight that just doesn't really go as planned. And yep, this was one of those flights. Carolyn and I had gotten up super early to go to a fly-in breakfast. The plan was to fly from Orlando Executive up to a private grass runway known as Cedar Knoll. Sky clear. Temperature 2-3, 2.23. ILS, runway 7 approach in use. Notice to end there. Runway 1331 closed, but available for taxi. Good morning, Orlando exec ground. Uh, Skyhawk 7380 Yankee, with information hotel. Uh, we're on the ramp at Echo 6, departing to the northeast VFR. 7380 Yankee, roger, runway 7, taxi via Echo 6, runway 31, Echo 4. The flight was going to be quick and easy, and the airspace was a nice little challenge as the runway sat right under a 700-foot Class Charlie shelf. Well, we couldn't land, and soon you'll see why. But first, let's talk about aerodynamics. So when an airplane flies, the top portion of its wing has low pressure, and the bottom portion has high pressure. And when the high pressure meets the low pressure, it spills off at the wingtip, which creates a circular flow or a vortex. This vortex can sometimes be seen when there is a lot of humidity in the air, or when a plane flies through a cloud. Now a propeller is basically a spinning wing, and this morning had 100% humidity with the temperature and dew point both being 23 degrees Celsius. So basically, that means that I got some really awesome footage of propeller vortices on takeoff. Good morning, Orlando Exec Tower, Skyhawk 738, Sierra Yankee, holding short of runway 7, ready for departure to the northeast. Number 738, Sierra Yankee, Orlando Executive Tower, northeast departure approved, runway 7, clear for takeoff. Northeast departure approved, runway 7, clear for takeoff, 38, Sierra Yankee. We got to see that again. So inside of the vortex is very low pressure. And when the pressure drops, so does the temperature. And in this case, the temperature dropped below the dew point of 23 degrees, which then condensed the water into visible water vapor. Man, aerodynamics is so amazing. Although the conditions were perfect for seeing propeller vortices, uh, they were also perfect for something else, fog. And as we made our way to Cedar Knoll, we started hearing that other pilots couldn't find the runway. Okay, we'll be looking for you. We're uh, southeast of the airport now. We'll come back around. All right, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> Any of the aircraft on the way to Cedar Knoll, if uh, you can handle a 2,000 foot grass runway, there is one seven miles uh, to the Traffic, Tavia inbound, uh, two miles southeast. Okay, if somebody else wants to try it, go ahead. That's not working for me. Uh. As we flew closer to Cedar Knoll, I started to notice a lot more traffic in the area. Oh, I see a powered parachute. Oh, I see two. Yeah. Same altitude, less than one mile. 
With people flying low in circles around a foggy runway, some important decision making had to be done. I didn't want to start itching to land and wait for the fog to lift with lots of other traffic in the area. So as much as I wanted that breakfast, I decided it would be best to leave and try another day. All right, yeah, let's call it. All right. So even though this flight didn't really go as planned, it was still a beautiful one. And we also got a cool weather and aerodynamics lesson from it. Sometimes a pilot has to weigh the risks of their flight and make the right decision. And there will always be more opportunities to fly to breakfast. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more. Blue skies and safe flying.